What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install and use multiple mods for Resident Evil Village. Now, before we get started, of course, there's many different places that you can get mods from, though one of the main ones that I'll be using in this video is, of course, nexusmods.com. For this website in particular, you will need to create an account. And of course, do be warned, there are quite a few not safe for work mods on this mod page. But other than that, basically, most of these mods are installed or used in one of three different ways. One, it's a DLL file or something similar you drop into the game's directory, which is super simple. Two, it's a separate program that you run, like a trainer, and you're able to interact with it separately or in-game through some kind of an overlay. Or the third one is by using a popular mod manager called Fluffy's Mod Manager. Almost every single mod that you go to will have an explanation of how exactly to install it, and if it doesn't, you can usually piece it together. If there's no obvious folder structure in the zip or file that you download, if it's simply a DLL or something similar, it may be something you just drop into the game's directory. You can do this by locating Resident Evil on Steam, right-clicking, hovering over Manage, and clicking Browse Local Files. Inside of here, you'll simply drag and drop the DLL and fire up the game as per usual. If we have a look at, say, this mod over here, the FOV slider, vignette disabler, free cam, flashlight, remod framework. If we scroll down, you'll see an installation section. Download the mod zip file, extract a dinput 8dll into your Resident Evil Village folder, and then launch a game and press the insert key on your menu. So I'll head across to files. I'll click manual download on the latest version, slow download, wait for it to finish, open it up, and I'll simply extract it to the game folder as such. Then I can fire up the game itself, and you can already see the reframe work in the top left-hand side, menu key insert. Pretty simple. Now, of course, throughout the game, I can press insert to show or hide this at any stage, and I'll be able to interact with it very simply. To remove a mod like this, basically all you have to do is delete the file that we copied into the game's directory. So I'll reopen the game's directory, locate D input 8, and delete it. It's that simple. For the second kind that I mentioned, downloading and opening up a program is really self-explanatory. If they tell you to download something, unzip it and open it up, that's exactly how you're supposed to use the mod. Now jumping across to the third type that I mentioned, using Fluffy's Mod Manager, it's really simple. Simply head across to the link in the description down below, fluffyquack.com, head across to modding at the very top, and we'll look for Fluffy Manager 5000. Click download, and wait for the download to start. Once it's done, you can open up modmanager.zip and you'll have all these files here. Simply extract these into a folder in a place such as your desktop. Doesn't really matter what you call it. Then you can close out of the zip and open up the folder we extracted everything to. Opening up modmanager.exe brings up this page over here. Simply select the game that we're going to be modifying. In this case, it's Resident Evil Village. You can see there's a ton of games supported here. I'll click on it and it currently says no mods found. On the right hand side, we have the ability to simply fire up a simple trainer, but this will only really work if you open up the game. As you can see, fail to start trainer, process not found, make sure the game is running. So in this case, simply fire up the game after enabling the trainer, which you can click to toggle it, or of course click this button while running it to open up the trainer in game. As for this tool itself, once you install mods, you don't necessarily need to have this open. If you have a look at the right hand side, we have the mod list, which shows us currently installed mods, currently nothing, downloads, which will show us a ton of mods over here that we can go ahead and download. These are the featured ones, and we have options. Now, if we go ahead and open up the mods folder over here, it'll open up the mods folder for the game that we're currently modifying. As you can see, games, RE8, mods. If you download a mod through the internet that requires Fluffy's mod launcher, or it contains a zip or a RAR file that has some sort of folder structure or directory structure, more than just a couple of files in it, more than likely, you'll just have to drop it in here. I'll give you an example in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and download a random mod off of the downloads page over here. I'll look for direct mod downloads, and I'll download, say, Banana Gun and Spoon Knife. I'll click it to start the download, and immediately it'll tell you how big it is, how long it'll take, and eventually it'll complete. Now that it's done, I can hit OK and look in the mods list. You can see the installed mods over here. I can turn them on with the button to the left hand side and after it's on, I can close out of the mod manager. I don't need to leave it open. It's already been installed. Now, as mentioned earlier, if you download a mod from the internet, it needs to be in some kind of a folder structure. Let's go ahead and click options and open mods folder and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There's simply a .raw file here that the mod manager downloaded, the banana gun and spoon knife mod. If I open this up, you'll see inside of it that we have modinfo.ini screenshot which I don't think is necessarily important, natives, STM, and a bunch of other files in here. 
This is the folder structure that I was talking about. If we close this and have a look at the actual game installation directory, you'll see natives, STM, followed by the files that the mod added. Pretty cool. So at this point, the mod is now installed. We don't need the mod manager to run. Let's go ahead and fire up the actual game itself. And of course, nothing crazy has happened. Let's go ahead and fire up the trainer. So I'll head back to the launcher, trainer, and as you can see, it's simply activated. I can turn on the override FOV, change it here, turn on or off the vignette here, and turn the HUD on or off here as well. So I'll go ahead and load up a game. And of course, from this point on, there may be slight spoilers if you haven't played the game at all. I've got through the first set of missions outside, and now I'm inside, still really close to the beginning of the story. So once again, spoiler warning, if you're not comfortable watching further in this video, skip forward to the time on screen here. And there we go. Now that we're in game, you can see I'm wielding a banana gun. If I scroll down, I've got a shotgun, a mine, and I've got a spoon over here, which has now replaced my knife. It's pretty simple, and it just works. Scrolling up, here's the banana gun again, and yes, of course, it does function. It's just a banana. If we have a look back at the trainer over here, I can override field of view, and I can set it to a number here, such as, say, 120. This will, of course, be a huge amount. But there we go. You can see it's readjusted. It really is just that simple. But anyway, here's where I'm going to quit out of the game to not give you any spoilers. Now, of course, to install other mods from somewhere like Nexus Mods, simply download the zip or raw file and hopefully it'll tell you that it needs the Fluffy Manager. If it doesn't, and you see something similar to the folder structure we mentioned earlier with a .ini file and a bunch of folders, simply drag it into the Mods folder, once again, Options, and Open Mods folder, then open up the trainer over here and in the mods list, you should be able to enable or disable those mods. Now something the mod manager creator also suggests is that when a major update or any update for that matter comes out on Steam, you can let the update complete. Open up the mod manager over here, turn off all of the mods that you can, then open up Steam once again. Right click Resident Evil Village, click Properties, and on the Local Files tab, simply click Verify Integrity of Local Files. This will run through all of the files on your computer, make sure they match the server, just in case a mod messed with any of your game files. Then, when that's eventually finished, inside of the Fluffy Manager, head into Resident Evil Village and click Reread Game Archives. After doing this, you should be able to re-enable your mods one by one, and everything should be working back as normal. But anyways, that's a super simple crash course. You'll find links in the description once again, and hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching, my name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!